What if everything you saw, heard, and believed was a lie? What if your mind created a reality so vivid, so convincing, that you couldn't tell it apart from the real world? This isn't the plot of a sci-fi movie. It's the terrifying reality for someone experiencing psychosis. Psychosis is a mental state where the mind breaks from reality, creating hallucinations, delusions, and chaos. But what causes it? How does the brain create these false realities, and can someone ever come back from it? In this video, we'll dive deep into the psychology of psychosis, exploring its causes, its impact on the brain, and the stories of those who've lived through it. By the end, you'll understand why psychosis is one of the most misunderstood and fascinating phenomena in psychology. Psychosis is not a mental illness itself. It's a symptom of an underlying condition. It's a state where a person loses touch with reality, often experiencing hallucinations, seeing, hearing, or feeling things that aren't there, and delusions strong false beliefs that resist logic. For example, someone might hear voices criticizing them or believe they're being followed by a secret organization. Psychosis can occur in several mental health conditions, including schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and severe depression. But what's happening in the brain during psychosis? Let's take a closer look. To understand psychosis, we need to look at the brain. One of the key players is dopamine, a neurotransmitter involved in reward, motivation, and perception. In people with psychosis, dopamine levels are often dysregulated, particularly in the mesolimbic pathway. This overactivity can lead to hallucinations and delusions. Another area affected is the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for reasoning, decision-making, and reality testing. When this region is impaired, it becomes harder to distinguish between what's real and what's not. Studies using brain imaging have also found differences in the temporal lobe, which processes sensory information, and the default mode network, which is active during self-referential thinking. These changes help explain why someone experiencing psychosis might feel like their thoughts are being controlled or that they're living in a dream. Psychosis doesn't have a single cause. It's usually the result of a combination of factors. Genetics play a role. If you have a family history of psychotic disorders, you're more likely to experience psychosis. But genes alone aren't enough. Environmental factors, like trauma, abuse, or chronic stress, can increase the risk. For example, someone who experienced childhood trauma might be more vulnerable to psychosis later in life. Substance use, particularly cannabis, LSD, or methamphetamine, can also trigger psychosis, especially in vulnerable individuals. Even sleep deprivation or extreme isolation can push the brain into a psychotic state. Interestingly, some researchers believe that psychosis might be a survival mechanism gone awry. In dangerous situations, being hyper-aware of threats, even imaginary ones, could have been advantageous. But in modern life, this same mechanism can spiral out of control. Psychosis has fascinated and terrified people for centuries. One of the most compelling cases is that of Daniel Paul Schrieber, a German judge whose memoir became a cornerstone in the study of psychosis. Schrieber experienced elaborate delusions believing he was being transformed into a woman to repopulate the world. Another well-known example is Vincent van Gogh, who is believed to have experienced psychosis during his lifetime. His vivid, swirling paintings may have been influenced by his altered perception of reality. The good news is that psychosis is treatable. The first step is usually antipsychotic medication, which helps regulate dopamine levels and reduce symptoms. Therapy, particularly cognitive behavioral therapy for psychosis, can help individuals challenge delusions and develop coping strategies. 
For example, someone who believes they're being watched might learn to question that belief and consider alternative explanations. Support from family and friends is also crucial. In some cases, early intervention programs can prevent psychosis from becoming chronic. Recovery looks different for everyone. Some people may experience only one episode, while others may need ongoing support. It's important to remember that psychosis doesn't define a person. It's just one part of their story. Psychosis is often misunderstood and stigmatized, but it's a human experience that deserves compassion and understanding. By learning about the psychology of psychosis, we can break down stereotypes and support those who are affected. If you or someone you know is experiencing symptoms of psychosis, don't hesitate to seek help. Early intervention can make a world of difference. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and don't forget to subscribe for more stories that dive deep into the complexities of the human experience.